suspense, of course, is one of the things that no other art form can do as well as, um, as cinema. I don't think anything can manipulate the time and the place and the, and, and the storytelling techniques the way that a movie can. So I wanted to try my hand at doing something that's really terrifying and suspenseful. DreamWorks Pictures and 20th Century Fox presents Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer in What Lies Beneath from Academy Award winning director Robert Zemeckis, a film about the perfect couple leading the perfect life. There are two very loving people with certain problems. Claire's hearing things. What? What are you hearing? Voices whispering. Those strange things that could be your imagination or could be the wind, or could be the house settling, or <laughs> is there a presence in our house? The same girl. Norman thinks his wife is completely nuts. And he contrives to get her to go to see a psychiatrist. There's a ghost in my house. Can you get what she wants? She said. It turns out that the marriage isn't as perfect as we had thought up to this cafe to get a coffee and I see Norman, but he wasn't alone. Up until now, I think Claire has believed this to be the perfect relationship. Did you know her? I had an affair with her. She came out here to the house, threatened to kill herself. Get out! We can put this behind us. Our life can go on. The facade is just crumbling away. What does she look like? Me. <laughs> Only she had green eyes. <laughs> I think she's starting to suspect something. Ooh. Your wife. Parker! And action! 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 You're telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? He's very skillful. He is a very skillful storyteller. Like that cut. Bob always uh, has prided himself on being an illusionist and doing things that you think are reality, but they're really the, the magician's tricks. I was fascinated by the illusion of movies before anything else. Robert Zemeckis was born on the south side of Chicago in 1951. Zemeckis had early aspirations to be a rock star, but they were abandoned when an 8mm movie camera came into his hands in high school. Enlisting friends and family as cast and crew, he began pursuing the passion that would consume him from then on, filmmaking. When I first started to see movies, I was only impressed by their special effects, always trying to figure out how they did a visual effect or how they did an action sequence. Experimenting with cinematic tricks fueled Zemeckis' interest in pursuing filmmaking as a profession and led him to the world-renowned USC School of Cinema and Television, where he produced Field of Honor, an ambitious project that garnered him the Student Academy Award in 1973. The film's combination of humor and technical savvy got the attention of director Steven Spielberg, who was instrumental in getting Zemeckis' first feature-length screenplay produced. He was able to convince Sid Sheinberg at Universal to give me a shot directing this little two and a half million dollar movie that uh, was I Want to Hold Your Hand. And of course then we learned the really sad lesson that just because movies work in audiences doesn't mean anyone wants to go see them. I Want to Hold Your Hand and his next film, Used Cars, were well received by the critics, but they never connected with an audience. Their style and energy, though, had caught the eye of Michael Douglas, who thought Zemeckis would be perfect for his next project. The studio didn't want me to do it because, you know, I was this guy whose movies didn't make any money, but, you know, to Michael's credit, I mean, he said, but look at the films, the films work, I want that kind of style, I want that energy in this movie. So he stuck with me and uh, hired me to do um, Romancing Stone.
The success of Romancing the Stone opened doors for Zemeckis. Studios were now vying for the opportunity to produce his next film, which turned out to be a time machine tour of 50s America that showcased Zemeckis' boundless imagination and stunning visual style. Heads, I couldn't make heads or tails out of the script. It just seemed cool, but I didn't go into it saying, oh, I know what Bob Zemeckis is doing. I know what I know what this film is going to look like. I know what Marty McFly is and what, what the story's about. I can't, I honestly can't tell you that I didn't know that. I had no idea. It was just this weird ride that somehow I, I got on, and, uh, and I was glad I did. Calls, but uh, you know, Back to the Future, a special effects movie. In fact, there's only about 30 shots in the whole movie, and uh, most of them are lightning. It's more of a science fiction story that has very few special effects shots in it. Special effects, however, played a crucial role in his next film, which at the time seemed like an attempt at the impossible. 111 Baker, take three. Action! Roger Rabbit, special effects movie, for sure. But again, the, the fun for me there was trying to make this blend of, you know, the illusionary worlds work, which has never been done, in my opinion, successfully before. <laughs> Zemeckis' reputation as a technical wizard was cemented on his next film, in which he combined his exceptional storytelling skills and inventive use of special effects to create another outrageous world in the macabre gothic comedy, Death Becomes Her. And cut. And cut. The diversity of his work turned out to be a Zemeckis trademark. He would win an Oscar for his next film, which recounted the epic journey of an innocent through a cynical world all the while delivering a profound contemplation on our times. Movie directing is exhilarating, exhausting, addicting, painful, rewarding, and a very cool job. Thank you all very much. The hardest thing about Forrest Gump was just the, the size, the scope and the size of the entire project. You know, literally, before lunch, uh, we're in Vietnam, and after lunch, Tom is talking to Jenny's grave. It was like that kind of a day, uh, every day. My given name is Benjamin Buford Blue. People call me Bubba. It's like one of them old redneck boys. Can you believe that? My name's Forrest Gump. People call me Forrest Gump. Bob's understanding of what the scene is about um, is it's, he's able to communicate it so clearly. He will come in and say, look, here's the red dot of what this scene is about. How do we maximize that red dot? My mom always said life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Attention to detail in every scene has always been essential in creating Zemeckis' fantastical worlds. But it would be his clarity of vision and decades of directing experience that proved to be key in bringing Carl Sagan's book, Contact, to life. It had been a long road on Contact, 10 years uh, with another director involved. And um, there just was a lot of mess going on. And uh, they basically you know, sent it to Bob and said, can you help please? And he came in and it was like a, a grown up walked into the room and just took everything over. Kind of slowly approach here, look over. And the camera comes over and this big vertigo shot where you look down at all the, you know, the, the ocean is a thousand feet down. And, Naturally, the story can only be told with a lot of special effects. But by that time, you know, I had a great, great team. You know, I had Ken Ralston, and teamed up with him from Back to the Future on, and we were able to, we knew how to do most of those shots by the time we did the movie. All of the members of Zemeckis' creative team are considered tops in their field. And as on his past films, all of their combined talents would be called upon to tell the terrifying story of what lies beneath. Norman's father had this old stuff, a uh, stately place on a lake. Which we're renovating. It's practically gutted. When you see this place, it's beautiful. It is right here. Well, you'll see it. 
what a Rick Carter and I did in the design of the house is that we wanted, um, like everything else in the movie, it had to have, it had to work on two layers. It had to be what looks like a perfect dream house when you see it in the sunlight in the perfect angle. But then if you start to make the shadows long, you know, and turn the light a different way and drop the camera to a lower angle, it can look ominous and um, scary in a way. I think that the house is a context for the characters because you see what it was that they had and then you watch it self-destruct. Depending on how you look at something, it can look beautiful or it can, you know, an everyday common thing can be an instrument of terror, which of course is one of the great um, devices for scary movies. <laughs> Like I said to Rob Legato, who was my special effects supervisor, I said, well, imagine what would Alfred Hitchcock do if he had computer graphics? With Hitchcock's films as a model, the special effects crew had a very specific vision for what lies beneath. You're actually looking for an op opportunity that Alfred Hitchcock might have used had he lived in this sort of digital age. And so then you start to picture all these Alfred Hitchcock type shots, but now much more extended than they ever could be. If you think about the different moves that highlight the Hitchcock career, you think about camera moves that start way outside of a building and wind up inside all in one shot. Um, now we have the ability to blend those kinds of camera moves digitally um, with, with ease. Bob, there is no simple shot. I mean, there is no, literally, there is no simple shot. <laughs> and action! We did this one scene, it was one shot, and it was just hysterical. I'm in the bathroom, and I go out, and as soon as I close the door, you just hear, clunk, 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 and there's this crew, that they pop out of the closet, and they're changing the whole bathroom around, and then I walk out there, and then I go back into the bathroom, and then they're gone. And it was so funny, trying to get through that thing without bursting into hysterics. Cut! Cut! Everybody happy? Print, next page. Bob's always been courageous, he's always been bold, and he's always wanted to push the envelope. Every day that he walks onto the set, he invents something new for filmmaking. I think Bob's a genius. I think Bob is the hardest working man I've ever seen in show business. In the amazing diversity of his work, Robert Zemeckis has accustomed audiences to expect the unexpected. The best film storytellers have this capacity to defy genre and to work in films that are very different to each other. And action! In What Lies Beneath, he takes his genius for illusion to terrifying new heights as he brings fear into focus. She's dead. Who's dead? You know damn well who's dead. Things aren't always what they appear to be. You had an affair with a girl who killed herself, and now she's trying to hurt you. Clear! I loved the construction of the script, the surprises that were built into it. You're not yourself today, are you? There are many different ways to look at this movie, and every scene, really. Everything's really symbolic of what lies beneath.